Guess what, YouTube? I'm working on the wood chipper once again. Uh, we just had a really nasty storm blow through on December 15th of 2021. We had a, basically a derecho event is what they call it. Uh, we had almost 100 mile an hour winds. We had literally zero visibility due to the dust. Then we had fires break out everywhere. This December is just insanely dry out here on the plains of Kansas where I live and the grass is just going up so easy. I do have a video on the whole event, a little vlog style about it on my other channel. I'll put a clickable thingy at the end of this video or you can check the description below if you want to go watch that. I've been through a lot of crazy weather events out here on the plains of Kansas. Literally been through two tornadoes many prairie fires, earthquakes. We had a 5.4 earthquake out here. That's right, on the plains of northern Kansas, we had a 5.4 earthquake. A lot of that stuff fell down. My trash can fell over, square tubing fell over. Ah, oh, hey, just saw that. My light came off the hook. Floods. Horrible blizzards, insane heat waves, insane cold. I've been through so much out here that I really thought that weather wouldn't phase me anymore. But this event was very stressful. The reason I bring that up is because I decided I want to get the generator up and running on this wood chipper. I basically had it going when I had to leave the farm and move to town. I've actually used the generator a couple times, but since I've moved here to town, it's pretty much just been sitting by itself. So I don't really know where I'm at with this project. I did put the hoist on it after I moved here to town and that has been super handy. Having the hoist on this wood chipper has just been, well, super handy. I don't really know what else to say about it. Um, there's a lot of times I can't get the crane on my truck into some place or I can't bring it in here and use the overhead hoist. Somebody's having fun. So that's basically what I've been using this wood chipper for, is just a little mobile crane. But, point being, we lost electricity for a while in this crazy derecho event, whatever they're calling this thing. The, the insane, insane fire dust bowl. bowl. And in order to get my welder hooked up to my water well so I have water, I have to drive my welding truck into my backyard and park it over there by the corner of my house. Not really a very convenient thing. Uh, it'd be much nicer if I could just wheel a generator over there. So my plan today is to go out and actually pressure wash the wood chipper. I'm actually going to start pressure washing a whole bunch of other things because everything is just covered in dust right now. It's just gross and disgusting. Dust and ash. It's actually ash from all the fires too. Oh, well, you've got to see the inside of my tractor. Holy cow. That is a crap ton of dirt in there from this storm. So freaking dirty in here. Oh my word. Oh geez, look at this. Oh my word. Oh. So everything is just covered out there. So I'm gonna break out the pressure washer. We're gonna start pressure washing and we're gonna start working on this wood chipper. And uh, try to get this thing back going. And I have no idea where I'm even out on this project. So we'll see where this all goes. Well, and I do have a lot more subscribers on this channel than when I actually started this wood chipper project. So if you're not familiar with this project, when I make these videos, I go a lot slower than my normal day-to-day -day videos. I ramble about other things of other events that are going on in the background. It's more of a vlog style instead of just an instructional here. This is how I'm doing it. I kind of take my time. I go slow with it. And so I'm just warning you up front, just relax, sit back, grab your beverage, and prepare to just watch the video for a while. So uh, got this all cleaned up now. I haven't started this engine in forever. So I'm gonna dump a little gas in the carburetor and see if this thing works. I've actually run a little WD-40 through the carburetor. I sprayed quite a bit in there, been turning it over by hand until the WD-40 has gone out of the carb. 
Now I'm gonna dribble a little gas in there, see if this thing will fire. See if I can dump way too much in there doing this. Oh, yep, way too much. <laughs> Most of the gas is gone now. Let's see if it goes. <laughs> I took the carburetor part and it is insanely varnished in there. The thing is just like almost not even salvageable. I don't know. It could, I'm sure with some cleaning I can get it. But I hopped online last night to look up a seal kit for this thing, rebuild kit for the carburetor, and it's twelve dollars. I was like, well, that's not bad at all. But an entirely new carburetor for this thing is sixteen dollars. What the heck? How can they even do that? I don't get it. So, I'm uh, just going to put on a new carburetor and not mess with rebuilding this one. I don't know. It seems like a complete waste to me that carburetors are the same price as rebuild kits nowadays. That the carburetor showed up already. Um, that was extremely fast. It's only been about three days. Came all the way from California. Seems like when I order stuff from California, it gets here really fast. I guess they got a truck that goes from LA or somewhere in that area just straight through to Kansas. Doesn't take long at all. But anyway, well, nope, that's smaller. We'll start tearing this thing apart. Just take this apart. I have a new air filter and oil filter coming in the mail. I was going to get one locally, but as much as I like to support local business, they were price gouging for the air filter and oil filter locally. Like serious price gouging. Uh, almost three times the price of what I can get it for, including shipping online. And I just much as I want to support my local businesses, that was just way too much over. Couldn't justify that. Got my handy dandy parts bowl I made. Is that going to come off of there? Oh, there it goes. Oh man, that carburetor is horrible. Oof. You gotta look inside there. Man, that definitely got some water in it. Dang it. Well, at least the carburetor is cheap. Okay, how's this all come apart? That and that come off. Flyers, 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 flyers. Need that little rubber thingy twist. There we go, it turns. Maybe it'll ladle off. And that fell off, okay. Gotta allow that one to come out. Yep, okay. I'm sorry, little carburetor. Oh, not too bad in there. I was expecting it to be horrible in there. Looks like the exact same carburetor. Mm -hmm. 
See, I'm flush out that hose a little bit. That tube looks like there's junk in there. Now you might be asking yourself, why on earth is your gasoline blue that you're pouring in there? Is that thing a two-stroke? Uh, no. Hmm. The first time I went and got gasoline from my local gas station and poured it into my lawnmower and saw it was blue, I freaked out. I was like, wait, what? This is two-stroke? That's not cool. Gas fuel mix or something? What the heck's going on here? So I smelled it, and it smelled like normal gasoline. It didn't smell like two-cycle mix or anything like that. So I'm like, uh, okay, what the heck's going on here? So I actually Googled it. It turns out that Cenex gasoline, which is the brand of the station that I got this gas from, is blue. Why on earth is Cenex gasoline blue? I couldn't find an answer for why it's actually blue, but yeah, Cenex. Blue gas. Who knew? I didn't know, because I always just put it in my car, never actually see the gas, but scared the crap out of me the first time I put that stuff in my lawnmower. Whew. There we go. It's working. Okay. Well, that was easy. Help a little bit. It's bolted on underneath here. A little bit of gas in the carburetor here to get it to pop off. Maybe it'll prime itself that way. Let's see. And let's see if I can hot wire this thing to get the start real quick here. No, I don't have a shiny spot anywhere to push it to, do I? carb. I'll see if I can get it running a little better.
Uh, oh, uh, it was not a carburetor problem. It was actually a prime problem. I didn't have enough gas in the lines. The pump just didn't pick up prime. And that was why it wasn't running anymore. So I got that all sorted out. All right, uh, what next? Uh, yeah, I'll figure out what next year I meant. I did have a wiring harness pretty much made for this thing, and I have no idea where it's at. Uh, let me show you here real quick. So this is the wire that goes to the battery, keeps the battery charged. This is the wire that, when grounded, shuts off the engine. So it's just those two wires as far as functioning of the engine. I got this wire which goes to the starter and uh, it needs a relay in it because when that starter gets hot voltage to it, it starts. It's not one of those starters that has a built-in solenoid or relay or anything like that. So it needs an external relay. Um, I know I had a harness that I had wire nutted to this and wired out of this, had the little relay in it. And did I have a switch on it? I'm 90% sure I had a little toggle switch that I had wired up to it. And I'd clamp that thing to the machine here and then run that out to the battery. And that's how I was starting it. Uh, don't know where it went. My plan is over here, if it'll work, this generator actually has two positions in it for a switch. You can pop these little not rubber plugs out. I don't know those are Bakelite plugs. You can pop those plugs out, put a switch in there, and that's where I'm going to put my on and off switch and a push button start switch. I was thinking that'd be a nice way to do it, but now that I'm sitting here looking at it, it would be a little difficult to get the wires to run out of this box and around and over to the engine. So, I don't know. I got my little kit showed up. That's the air filter and oil filter. And it's actually got fuel filter and spark plugs in it too. So, it's a pretty neat little kit. Let's see if this air filter fits. I definitely need some more of these hose clamps because I gotta put one up there. And you can't see it, but I gotta put one up on top of the fuel tank there. Alright, which way does this go? This way. Wow, oh, tell me you're great. Right. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Whew. Fuel filter. And there's spark plug and clamps, so. Alright, I'll leave that. I'll probably put in the new spark plug too while I'm at it. I'll leave myself out one clamp. I'll set it over there in the fuel tank that I can get. And we'll put the uh, oil filter on later after I get the engine good and warm here in a bit. All right, sweet. Anyway, I gotta get back to work though. It's noon on a Monday, so I am running the plasma table right now, but maybe I can work on it a little bit this evening. Well, this is me from the future, three months later to be exact. It's actually mid-March. And I was working on the edit of this video and realized, I think I'm going to end this here. Just do the carburetor replace and kind of just get the thing started and make sure that the generator's working and getting started on the electrical, which I never got back to doing the wiring harness or any of that stuff yet. But next, I actually work on the front hitch mount quite a bit. And I feel like that really just needs to be its own episode. So if I get my editing done next Tuesday, there will be another episode of the wood chipper, which I change how I've got the hitch attached. But the exciting news is I am working on this wood chipper once again. Um, I haven't worked on it in about four weeks now though, because we bought a shipping container that we're gonna be setting up for storage and an office and a paint booth. So I'm working really hard on that right now to get that thing all situated. But once that shipping container is set, that means I will have storage for this wood chipper. That means I'll be able to get rid of some of the stuff out of the garage here and have a little more room. I won't have to have stuff hanging over my head all the time that my wife paints. So I feel like I'm going to be able to work on the wood chipper in my spare time a whole lot more once the shipping container is all settled. And I think that's all I'm saying. So next week, y'all. And don't forget, uh, if you want to see the video on the December 15th storm, Dust Bowl, Fire Palooza thing that we had, 
you can click on the screen right here and that'll take you to it or check the description below if that's easier for you. That video is on my other channel.